Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and in today's video it's going to be a modelling project related video. In this particular video the project I have on the go is a project that I've had on the cards now for quite a while and I am looking forward to doing this project and that project is going to involve me modelling this model into a model of my own. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this is going to be a modelling project video where I take this model, which is a Batman Rusty from the Thomas and Friends narrow gauge range and this is going to be turned into my own model. Now, the model it's going to become is going to be a freelance locomotive so it's not going to be modelled on something that exists in real life. It's going to be a locomotive that's made up basically but you know that's fine because having a freelance locomotive on the narrow gauge railway I think you know it will add some interest on the layout to have a locomotive that's freelance that's not made up rubbing shoulders alongside all the other locomotives I have in my collection that are of course modelled on real locomotives and also, it's something different as well, it makes a change, I think. So the model has been removed from the box, and I have to say, it is a very nice model. There's also quite a bit of weight to this as well, but then this model is made out of die cast. I will point out though, if you are going to do any modelling, with this model, it is important to give this model a test run before you do any modelling with it. Because if you do any modelling on the model and then you come to run the model and then you find out it doesn't work, you'll be unable to return the model. So it is best that you give this model a test run before you do anything to it. So the first thing I'm going to do with this model is to remove the face. Now, as shown in the diagram, there are four lugs at each end of the face. Now I probably should take the body off to remove the face but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the face without removing the body so I'm just going to pry the face off. That's what I did with the Project Taddy Clean with the Batman Scarlowe model. I managed to remove the face without removing the model. And I'm going to attempt to remove the face by using just a standard steak knife. Okay, so the face has been successfully removed. A couple of the plastic lugs though were stuck in the holes, so what I had to do was I had to get a scalpel and scrape them down a bit so those little plastic bits weren't sticking out. You can see that there are a few small scratches on the front there but they're not deep scratches and because this part of the model is going to be repainted it's not going to really be noticeable anyway. But I've got the face right here so the face will be thrown away later on because I'm not going to really have any need for it and those holes at the top there, I've just filled them in using poly cement. And I think it's worked fairly well. So, next I'm going to remove this little detail part here. Which is also removable. Looking at the exploded diagram here. I don't know what this little detail part is or what it would be for in real life. It 
So there we are, that little detail part has now been removed. So now I am going to remove the name and the number from the model and I'm going to do that using some Dynacut. Okay, so the name and number has been removed on both sides. I mean, there's still a few little bits of the marks there from the numbers and the name, but that's not to matter because the name and the numbers have mostly been removed otherwise. You do have to give it a good scrub though. I did use several cocktail sticks to do so, and you do have to scrub quite hard to remove it but it does work and so now we are going to start the painting of this model now the colour I have chosen to repaint this model in is dark green I've got a pot of humble paint here which I went out and bought the day before I'm filming this video and the dark green I've chosen is matte 149 which I thought this to be a very nice dark green colour to use and I'm going to use a method I've done before I'm going to paint it on using a brush like this one but I'm only going to apply a very small amount on the model because that way it means I'll be able to keep the details such as these grills here and the rivet So several coats of paint later and the paintwork on the model is now finished. And I must say, I really do absolutely love this shade of green. It really does suit the model down to the ground. You know, it, it suits it really well. If you're wondering about this here on the windows and the doorway on the other side of the model that you'll see in a minute, if you're wondering why there's all paint on them. Basically I have masked off these windows and the doorway on the other side of the model that you'll soon see in a minute with Umbral Masco. And basically, I'm sure you all know what it is, but what it does is it's like masking tape but in a liquid form. So you just simply apply it on an area where you don't want the paint to get to on a brush and then it, it dries and then you can just simply peel it off later and it, it really is something that I do highly recommend and so I've used it for the windows and the doorway on the other side because I didn't want to get paint on the windows or on the doorway because this model doesn't have an open cab so the windows and the, the doorway and the cab they're not open up you know, so they're painted a, a light grey colour so I wanted to keep them rather than having to repaint them so that's why I've added the mask on. So I'll just turn the model around to the other side. The tail lamp there at the back I have decided to keep but it will be painted again later on. I will give her a repaint at some point. As you can see there's the doorway I was telling you about. Masked up with the humble mask on. And also, the amount of times I actually strip the paint off using the Hornbrow thinners to get it exactly as I wanted it to, you know, it did take quite a few times where I removed the paint using the Hornbrow thinners and repainting the model till it got how I looked, which is as, as it is now. There's all the cotton buds I used there. So I'm really, really happy with how the paintwork on this model has been done. Okay, so it's now the next day, and so I've given the paint long enough to dry now, which it is, and so now I'm going to remove the mask and the masking tape off the model.
there is a bit there I am going to have to touch up if I just zoom in on the camera just there but that'll be fine a little bit there I'll need to touch up because sometimes obviously touch ups will have to be made sometimes That side is okay. I'll just scrape away that little bit of masking tape off. That was there, there we are. Then pull the tape off the roof. There we are. Okay, so I'm quickly going to take you through the touch-ups that I've made off camera to the model. So first of all, this part of the model here, just by the grills and this part of the model down here, have been painted green. I've also painted the insides of the window frames because they were orange as well as the insides of the doorway as well they're now all green so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the cab roof and I'm going to paint the cab roof grey and the paint I'm going to be using is this one Phoenix Precision and this is the P311 Network Rail Roof Grey which is the door one which I think this will be a very nice grey paint to use for the roof Okay, so the cab roof has been painted grey and I have to say the Phoenix Precision paints really are good and it is a very nice shade of grey as well Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the top of the buffer beams of this model to get rid of the orange paint that's on top of them just move the camera there a bit closer and so for this I'm going to use a humble acrylic paint which is 174 and so what I'm going to do how I do this normally is get a cotton bud and get a small amount of paint on the end of it and I just rub it across I might paint the whole buffer beam actually and so there we go, so I will do the buffer beam as well I think so off camera I decided to paint the whole buffer beam, the same red that I've used to paint the top of it, just so that the colour matches and blends in. So I'm about to do the rear buffer beam. Okay, so with the paint on the buffer beams now dry, I'm now going to paint the front of the loco. Now originally I was going to paint the front yellow, and my plan originally was to use this, which is, this is a humble acrylic paint, and this is part of the rail colour range, and this is number 407, which is the warning yellow, and my plan was to paint the front using this paint, but... I have since changed my mind and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the front 
using the same colour as the body using the 149 dark green this is because I I have seen a lot of pictures on the internet some narrow gauge diesels do have yellow warning panels but there are others as well that do have the front of the locos basically the panels at the front where they're painted the same colour as that on the body so I've decided that I'm gonna paint the front of the loco using the Humble 149 as well Okay, so the paint is now dried and that is looking really nice that is so I am quite happy with that especially how it matches the body as well, the front of the Lyoko also painted those little bits at the back there of course which I did that using cocktail stick which they are these little bits at the back and there's the other one which you can just about see there so I think next what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the running board Okay, so the running board has been painted and the black paint I used to paint it was Revel 36108 which is a matte black. The foot plate was painted using a cocktail stick. I did use a cocktail stick for some parts of the running board but for the parts to paint it in the nuts, in the nuts and crannies I used this little brush here to paint the running board and I am actually rather happy with that. I'm just bringing close to shot as you can see. I have made a few touch ups as well elsewhere in the model. And the black running plate will just set that off, I think. Okay, so I think what I'll do next is I'll paint some of the smaller details on this model. Okay, so you saw me paint a few details on camera. The axle box covers have been painted using the Revel aluminium paint, which is a silver colour, and the number of this paint is 36199. I've also painted on some lights, as you can see there again using this Revel aluminium paint and they do look quite nice I think the actual box covers on this side of the model as well have also been painted again using the Revel aluminium paint and then I have repainted the tail lamp just painted it white and obviously painted the middle using the Humbrol Acrylic 174 Signal Red So those little detail parts have now been painted So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a couple of horns on the model I've decided I'm going to add two of them and I've decided I'm going to use these horns here 
they are quite small but the reason I've chosen this is because they'll look better on the model and they'll look they'll look better in terms of scale as well so they'll be about just right to fit on this model this horn here I had originally decided to put on the model but this horn is too big because I did put it up against the model using a pair of tweezers and it's just not going to look right if I fit it so these little horns here will be just right to fit on okay so the other horn has been glued on and that had to be done off camera I mean that wasn't easy to do it was quite fiddly to glue them on but both horns are now glued on in place and they do look really nice on the model so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add on a grill to put on the front of the loco so for the grill to put on the front of the loco I have decided I'm going to use a frost grill and these have come from, I have two of them here they have come from detailing packs from models the blue one here came with the detail pack from a Batman class 40 and this frost grill here came with the detail pack with my Batman class 37 and I do think adding on a frost grill like this one for example as a grill for the front of the loco would be quite nice to do especially because that this locomotive is not being modelled on any real locomotive it's going to be something entirely freelance so I think adding a frost grill on the front of the loco will look quite nice I think so using one of the frost grills what I have done is I've cut a small bit out of it so it can be glued on the front of the loco there this isn't going to stay blue when it's applied onto the model because I am going to paint this a different colour I'm thinking of painting it using the Revel aluminium paint that I used for the lights on the front there to paint the lights on and the axle box covers and I think that will look quite nice ok so I've painted the frost grill using the Revel aluminium paint I've only painted the one side of it because this is the side that's going to be shown the other side it doesn't matter as much so I'm going to fit that onto the model and I'm going to glue it in place and I'm going to glue it on using some of this Yoohoo glue gel So with the frost grill now glued on in place, this model is now finished. I was considering on adding a brake pipe on this model, but in the end I decided not to. But I am very pleased with how this model has turned out. Let's give you a quick overview of sorts of this model so yeah I am really really pleased with how this model has turned out and this model will, is now ready for work on the layout and this model will be a rather welcoming addition to the narrow gauge fleet See, I'm really really happy with this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this model running so I'm going to give this a test run so you can see this model run it has had a few test runs before prior to doing this project and it does run well and just look at how smoothly that runs You know, that is really smooth. It's stuck in a dirty bit of track there, I'll have to give that a clean.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you with a few shots of this model running around on the layout. So that will bring me on to the end of this video now. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my project turning a Batman Rusty from the Thomas and Friends range into my own freelance narrow gauge diesel. I really have enjoyed doing this project and I'm really pleased with how the models turned out. Do check out my other content and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Bye.